Hello and welcome to a special edition of Wide Open Throttle, coming to you from the floor of the SEMA show in Las Vegas. And with me, a different crew. Charles True from Import Tuna, Jonathan Wong from Super Street, and Peter Tarrant from Modified. And this being SEMA, of course, we're here to talk about hot cars. And we've got a particular trio behind us, a bunch of Chevy Sonics. So Peter, let's start with you. What was the vision for the Modified Chevy Sonic? Well, we tried to focus more on uh, the performance side of the build, and uh, that meant looking at the engine, the suspension, the brakes, and uh, winding the stance. That was a big thing for me. I really wanted to take this car and kind of give it that hard, uh, raw, mean look, and uh, we kind of went from that first and added some fender flares, and after that put some Volk Racing wheels, and we have two sets. So we've got one set which is dedicated for the track. Engine-wise, we went into uh, upgrading the inner cooler, we did some intake and exhaust work, and then did a Bad News Racing tune, which has bumped horsepower around 40, 50, and torque around the same amount. And uh, we'll be getting into doing a, a meth injection kit as well, just to even increase it more, crest the 200 horsepower mark, because the 1.4 liter turbo, it's a decent engine, so to speak, but you know, it's hard to extract power out of that. Still, that's a reasonable horsepower bump for a 1.4. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, it's not bad. Like from the factory, it, it's decent, it feels peppy, so to speak, but now it, it has come alive. So the whole point with this build was that all you guys were given a, a, a Sonic and you had to put some of your own uh, brand's personality in it. Charles, you had a very different approach with your car. Um, yeah, I kind of wanted to keep things a little bit uh, like realistic, something that readers could relate to. Yeah. So I did a little bit of performance. We did an inner cooler, front mount inner cooler, a trifecta tune, downpipe exhaust, and then other than that, we kind of stayed away from too much performance. Um, it's a 1.4 liter. We got probably about 50 horsepower out of it too, but going beyond that gets really difficult. The head's really small. Um, so concentrated on other things like the interior stuff with the Recaro seats, the exterior with the 3D carbon body kit, the Saibon parts. And the, air the wheels are really interesting on that car. Yeah, the wheels kind of uh, are like a retro looking wheel. Um, it's been really popular lately for our group to be using uh, like older style wheels. What's the, what's the attraction? Um, just a different look? Yeah, just a different look. It's a little bit refreshing because everything has gotten so stale with all the newer wheels. So everybody's been trying to collect older wheels and, or do newer wheels that look like old wheels. Yeah, well, I saw those and it reminded me of wheels you used to see on the Porsche 935. Yeah, back yeah. IMSA cars, that kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. And Jonathan, your car is different again. Ours is completely different from these two guys because we kind of knew that they, Peter would go all performance, Charles would kind of do maybe more along the lines of what we would typically do. But I thought, take it one step further because the one thing Super Street guys like to do most is spend time on their phones, and do a lot of things with technology. So. While we kept some of the, you know, light modification to the airbag suspension, we said, okay, what can we do to take some of those things that we like to do off cars and put it into the car? So we uh, turned it into a mobile uh, Wi-Fi hotspot, right. so we can actually log in, use the internet. Uh, we have a iPad or tablet set up so that we can actually use the car to use social media. Yep. Um, it's got a full DJ system in the trunk because uh, one of my guys, Sam, loves dance music, so we figured we might as well take it one notch further and uh, add a, you know, something really crazy like that. And what's the deal with the camera on, on the car? Uh, we, yeah, we integrated several cameras throughout the car. We have one that raises up yeah, the through the roof. Yep, yeah. it's a 360 view camera, so right. we can uh, take a full uh, you know, view around the show if we want to. We have two cameras inside facing the drivers, and we have another camera that, another 360 camera, I think, that can take the full rear view. Too. That's pretty appropriate, isn't it? Given that Super Street's Instagram site, I think, has over a million followers. Yeah, now. that's right. So the Chevy Sonics um, fairly new on the scene. What do you guys think that uh, you know? You're going to see any? more of these sorts of cars is going to be a platform that people are going to be able to use? I think so. I mean, realistically speaking, um, when you get into these cars, uh, you know, for the most part, they're commuter cars, but the GM's added a, a good amount of performance and, um, you know, fun to drive, so to speak, especially with the RS models, and I think that's kind of what's separating them from the rest of them. I noticed you yeah, two RS models and we've got a, an LT. Charles, what made you choose this? I just wanted something a little different. I didn't want a hatchback, and so, 
I picked up the sedan and uh, they don't have an RS sedan. It's interesting as, as someone who's uh, you know worked in in Australia and in Europe. You know, there's there's no hatchback culture really in the U.S. Yeah. Why is this? <laughs> I think sure. it's coming around. <laughs> Yeah, I think so. I think more and more people are looking for cars that have utility, right? So, um, but are still fun to drive, and I think that's where the the hatchbacks come into play, like these RSs. But um, I think overall, it's just big and wide in America, right? Everybody loves their cars and sedans. I think uh, have always been predominantly, or sports cars have been predominantly the, the cars of choice. But. Okay, so these programs inevitably you're you're wrenching on these cars until the last minute. If you had your time over again, what would you do differently? If I did have a little bit more time or a little bit more budget, I'd probably get into the audio a little bit more. Um, we kept the uh, factory uh, stereo because we wanted to keep the MyLink system, but probably would have added more to it, just like upgraded the speakers even more than we did. Yeah, I mean, we're pretty happy with the way our car came out too. We didn't have too many problems because we had a really great fabricator, Mike Boo, uh, from MD, MV Designs come in and uh, build it, you know, do all the hard work for us. So that was done relatively smoothly. Um, but I think if there's one thing I want to do to the car, maybe add a little bit more performance because we didn't touch anything on the engine except for the exhaust. So we put on a GM Performance uh, cat back. And that, that DJ kit in the back looks like a ways of time. It, Ways of time, <laughs> yeah. for sure. But it sounds really good when you play play the music. That's really helped the uh, over, lift up over Oh yeah, here. yeah. <laughs> It'll handle Peter's car in the track. Yeah, of course. Right. <laughs> you know, for me, I think uh, you know, if I had more time, I would have definitely done more work to the engine. I would have loved to fortify it. You know, build, a, get some uh, custom pistons made, and work on the head. As Charles said, like this engine, um, the head's kind of limited uh, in terms of RPM and flow. So. Uh, but SEMA time, it's, it's so difficult. I think uh, very few people realize how little time we do have to build these things. And, um, you know, to try to do an engine build, which is what everybody would want to see, it's, that would eat more than anything else on this build. Well, this engine's not had a lot of aftermarket development, has it? Right, right. No, it's, it's fairly new. Like, it's in the, uh, available on the cruise as well. So there's been people that have done work on that. But again, it's just small baby steps, right? These are new cars. People don't want to go too crazy and blow an engine, and then all of a sudden they're out of warranty or they have to go fix it. So it can get costly quick. So what do you guys look for when you, you're looking? You know, there, there are certain cars that uh, in your worlds have become great platforms for doing lots of different things, you know, everything from, from Civics through to, you know, to 40 SXs yep. and things like that. What do you guys look for for the sort of car that uh, is easily modifiable? Well, I wouldn't say this car was easily modifiable. We had a lot of challenges finding parts. Yeah. So it was a good challenge though, because the car is, it's surprisingly better than, you know, I think what we thought it might be originally. Right. So it handles really well stock drives really decently, so I think just adding small parts that we could find or have fabricated really helped out a lot. Does it have, you know, you, you kind of want more factory performance parts or aftermarket performance parts available? Is it, This is a bit of a trouble. Yeah, I think you always do, but you know, let's face it, like I said, I think there's not a lot of people that are gonna go to this extent with these types of vehicles. People will wanna add parts and there's already forums, like guys are upgrading exhaust systems, even turbos these days. So, um, and I think GM's done a great job of providing um, a whole slew of performance parts for these cars. Like they even have a offer of ECU recalibration, which you know, it's hard to find other companies that are doing that. Um, and to me, that's really nice is you get a warranty and you can go get bigger brakes, exhaust system, suspension for this car straight from GM and, you know, still, like I said, retain the warranty. It's a very different uh, kind of performance car from GM because here in America, you know, the, the bow tie badge is usually attached to big grumbling V8s. Right. It's, yeah. it's a very different sort of, <laughs> very different sort of vehicle. These are more buzzy, but... <laughs> I mean, what is your what is your readership usually? What's been the reaction to to doing cars like a Chevrolet in, in Super Street and uh, Import Tuna, which you know, have yeah. almost all been uh, JDM cars, haven't right. they? Right. I, I mean, I think they're starting to slowly warm up to it because I think once they see that we we take an interest into it, then it might be worthwhile for them to do it too. Well, if you look at your Instagram feed, yeah. I mean, look at the cars you feature in there. There's yeah, there's and we've gone all across the board, so there's no car that you can well, I think and that's touch. the thing it's it's a broadening of the audience now yeah. right before 10 years ago it was really really segregated where the domestic guy wouldn't even look at an import yeah. and now the internet's kind of opened all that up so you know more and more people 
are okay with seeing these types of vehicles in, in those types of magazines, right? So, mine too. But uh, you know, for me, I, I've started focusing a lot of on more so on domestics and even European cars because I see it broadening, and you got to kind of be there, right? Well, that's it, it's appropriate that we're here at SEMA, of course, because I love coming to this show because you just see such a diversity of car culture. You see everything here and, and uh, a bunch of good ideas. What do you guys think will be the trends that we'll see here at SEMA this year? I think lowered cars, like low has just been going every year. It's been lower and lower. And, you know, I think that trend still continues to flourish. And it's, for most part, it's easily attainable, right? There's a lot of people out there that can put wheels on their car and lower. And I think um, that's kind of segmented into a lot of the vehicles you see here. Well, we're guilty of that. <laughs> we <We're laughs> yeah. our yeah. cars right here. <laughs> yeah, there isn't much wheel right. travel left on either no. of those. <laughs> but I'd say um, flares, I think, are getting really popular this year. Flares are back. Yeah, like fender flares, and bolt on fender flares, yeah. particularly. Yeah. Crazy body kits, yeah. Yeah. low, wide offset wheels. <laughs> So almost a faintly retro, I mean, that's big, big fender, bolt on fender flares yeah. and, and sort of offset wheels where you've got deep, deep yeah. dish, it's very sort of 70s. Yeah, I yeah. think everybody wants their car to look like a race car, so to speak. You know, if you look at all the styling cues, for the most part, it comes from race cars and like the old ones, especially, yeah. you know, where the deep offset wheels and now the crazy arrows coming back, like these ducktails, yep. and they're all coming around quickly. I don't wonder whether it's all the guys going to see Rush, and uh, you know, which is a <laughs> fabulous movie with perfectly captures the late seventies. I mean, the, those sort of styling things. When I first started modifying cars, that was what you had. Um, what's interesting here for me too, though, is that you get a lot of um, you know guys from car companies come around and designers come around and look at SEMA. I mean, the thing that struck me last year was coloured wheels. Mm -hmm. Everyone had coloured wheels, any colour other than black or right, silver. Yeah. Um, so I'm wondering how long it'll be before we see a bolt on fender flares on a on a, a production Chevy or right there. It's <laughs> <laughs> bolt on fender flares yeah. sort of no, that's, on the factory. Yeah, it's true. I mean, I think you never know, right? And the, it's amazing to see how many OEMs are here and support the show and you know really look at it because it is a huge industry. At the end of the day, the aftermarket world I think is uh, is continues to grow and, and will continue. And you've got OEMs that need to be here. What about colors? Um, you know, a few years ago, everything was going matte finish. Now, um, not so much. What are we seeing? Any any insights on colors? Not really colors, but I see a lot of uh, wrap. A lot of wrap? Yep, wraps now are really popular. It's an easy way of modifying your car, of getting a, a lot of visual impact for not a huge well, amount of money. On an expensive car, it's yeah. very easy because you don't have to go and repaint a Ferrari. You can wrap it, yep. right? Two, three years later, you can peel it off and you've got the original color. There's always been a lot of doom and gloom around uh, uh, the industry, particularly the aftermarket industry. You know, that as regulations get you know, stricter and stricter, that you know, the, the ability to modify cars is going to go away. What do you guys see? Are we still going to be doing this sort of stuff ten years from now? I think we will yeah. be. Yeah, <laughs> we'll we'll find find I don't know <laughs> to what extent, but yeah, it does get harder and harder, and then the technology gets increasingly better and better. So it's kind of like not really needed either, but. Cars are so good these days. Yeah. That's kind of, I think, the the big trend. You know, before cars really had a lot of leeway where you could modify them, and now they're so good. And the electronics, like Charles said, I think that's a big thing too. Stability control systems. You start modifying cars too far out, yep. and all of a sudden you're in this zone where they don't perform as well now because of those systems. So it's, it's challenging. But you know, to me, bolt-on is going to continue to be very big because with that and the the advent of more turbocharged engines coming around, I think. It'll be good. So it sounds like increasingly like you're going to have to be an electronics engineer and a yes, computer yeah, geek yeah. to make your car go <laughs> yeah. quick in the next. That is the future. Okay, and on that note, that's all we've got time for this week on Wide Open Throttle. Thanks for joining us here at SEMA, and thanks to the guys, and make sure you check out the cars. That's all. Bye.